it before we have our closing hymn. Those may turn back to your seats. Thank you so much. As you keep the tape rolling, before we have our closing hymn. Beloved, as the pastor of your church, this has been a journey and God has blessed us in a marvelous way. He's given us a mission to do. He's given us work to do. And we've been on that track since day one that my wife and I have come to this church. And the enemy of souls is not happy. And he has done some things to impact our direction, our work. We love all the children of this church, all the saints of this church. We love everybody. We're just trying to do God's work. But I have to tell you, the devil would not pat anyone on the back to wish them well serving God in the highest way. So we've been impacted. We've been impacted since July of last year I have to say this since July of last year things have happened and there's been a challenge brought to myself brought to my wife and trying to keep the church going we've been challenged with teachings that has come into our church and I'm not so much leaning on the teachings I'm leaning on the confusion of this particular situation so let me spell it out to you so we're clear throughout the past year up until now from July I have been bombarded with concerns of a religion religious movement a ministry called love reality I have been accused of our church being a hot spot for love reality a place that is in agreement with what they do. I would have to tell you, not everything that is taught is error, but there is error, error in it because I've investigated it for myself, not what anybody in high places have said. No, I've dealt with every possible thing that I could possibly do. I've been praying about this. I've emailed and shared, talked. I've figured it out. It is not a ministry that is going to be a part of this church. It's not a ministry that's going to be teaching its dogma in this church. No way. Why is this? Because it is the common denominator of a ministry that has actually caused confusion throughout the North American division in many churches. It has. It has. And all I'm saying is, and there's many loving people in it, whatever, all I'm saying is I do not want the identity of a ministry that has caused confusion and is causing confusion to be attached to this church. Nobody wants their identity to be overtaken by some other entity that you don't agree with. Okay? So for those that want to be a part of that or they are part of that, that that's fine. But they need to understand this church, what did I say? Is not a supporter of that ministry. This church is not inviting any leader, any speaker, any person that's a part of the ministry to this church to teach, preach, or do anything in any of our forms. I want to disassociate ourselves from the confusion that it is, it is the combinator of, the nominator is. Some of these leaders, good people and all that, but there's people who have taken on their teachings and they done messed it up and mixed it up, and they're teaching things that they don't even teach from the leader's perspective. That's confusion. We don't want that confusion attached to our church. Why? Because even on social media, it appears that we are an entity of that ministry. We are not. We're not. I want my church family right now to be comfortable to know, comfortable to know that we are on a mission, and whenever you hear about somebody that's part of that ministry, just know that's not part of Pasadena. That's not what we receive. We're not inviting, we're not having that here, period. Let me put it straight. As long as I am here, no way. That's not what we're taking on. 
I'm not condemning anybody that's a part of that. That's your business. But please understand, none of the teachings, none of the whatever you want to say about doctrine and all of that, I'm not even tripping that. Uh-uh. It's not a part of this church. It will not be a part of this church. It will not continue to be a part of this church. At all. At all. Why? Because there's great confusion that's mixed up with it from the general conference on down. And I don't want our church to be associated with confusion. That's all. That's all. That's it. So don't come talk to me about some doctrine. No. The confusion perception that you have is the problem. So I want to separate us from that. Completely from that. Please understand that. Now I know this is difficult for some to hear, but you know what? I've been wrestling with this for almost a year. How best to do this. You know what I wanted? I wanted it to, hopefully it'll just dissipate and won't be no big deal. But what I notice is, in the last few weeks, it's getting stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. And if I don't do something, it will take over my church. That can't happen. That can't happen. As long as I'm here, that will not happen. I just want you to be comfortable with that. Why do I need to say this? Because there's so many of our church family, we're concerned. And they're watching me, and it's like, Pastor, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? You know, but it's, not, it's more concern even outside, not just here, outside. I have to say this. I have to say this. God Almighty has shared that I share this. Many of you have no clue that this was happening. See, I see a big picture. I'm a watchman, and I'm sounding the alarm. And I'm showing love to everybody. I don't care where you stand. I just want you to know that ministry has no place at Pasadena. Amen. Closing prayer. Closing sermon.